Good afternoon, everybody. I'd like to welcome you to this week's Impact Wrestling Media Teleconference. This is Ross Foreman. We're going to kick it off with uh, our traditional hot news segment with uh, Josh Matthews. Josh, let me open up your line and uh, good, happy uh, Pi Day to you, Josh. Hello, Ross. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, we'll follow the traditional format. I've got some uh, announcements, and then we'll take some phone calls, and we'll go from there. Um, of course, Impact tomorrow night, 8 p.m. Eastern, 7 Central. A lot happening tomorrow night on the show following Crossroads. Um, before I get into that, though, I do want to thank everyone for the last two weeks. And uh, the ratings have been up, and we've seen some incredible things happening on the show. You guys have been so supportive. And when I say you guys, I get to say that to all of our fans. Listening in to this teleconference today is something that we've wanted to do for a while, was open this call up so that you guys can hear everything that's happening. I know that you guys see the social media, um, you know, the updates and the posts that we do these calls every week. But now for the first time, you guys have the chance to, to listen in and hear what the wrestlers and the knockouts and what we all have to say each and every week. So welcome. Thank you for joining us. And again, Impact tomorrow night, uh, 8 p.m. Eastern, we're going to see an exclusive interview with the world champion, Austin Aries. Um, Austin will sit down and discuss everything that happened at Crossroads, his match with Johnny Impact, successfully retaining the championship in that match in that first time ever bout that we saw. I'm sure Aries will touch on a few different things as he typically does. Uh, it's the last chance tomorrow night for the Monster Abyss to make an appearance. According to Jimmy Jacobs and Congo Kong, they will call out Abyss one more time, and we'll see if the original Monster answers and accepts the challenge that has been laid down from Jimmy Jacobs and Congo Kong. Um, Sammy Callahan, who will be on the call in a little while, he goes one-on-one -on -one with Falaba. That should be an intriguing match, considering the last time we saw Sammy, uh, what he was doing inside the ring at Crossroads, and then, of course, before that, uh, the baseball bat to Eddie Edwards, the news that uh, took the world by storm. Matt Seidel will introduce his one true spirit guide to the entire world. Seidel, of course, a double champion now, and uh, he credits this one true spirit guide. So we're going to find out who that is tomorrow. Taya Valkyrie and Rosemary go one-on-one. -on -one. If you guys saw the video package that was posted yesterday uh, to our socials and then this morning to impactwrestling.com. It really sets the stage for this incredible match between these two knockouts. And then, of course, Jeff Feaster fired. Um, new names have been announced every day on impactwrestling.com and stories about why these guys are entering this match, uh, the reward being worth the risk in Feaster Fire. Not only are you competing for an opportunity to become a, a champion, to earn a championship match, but, you know, you have that uh, one case out there that could end your career. Uh, then Friday night, one night only, March Breakdown will happen on GWN at 8 p.m. Eastern. Um, I was at March Breakdown in Windsor, uh, co-promoted by BCW. That was uh, just such an incredible show, a fun atmosphere in Windsor. Um, I didn't have this written down, but speaking of Windsor, we'll be back June 1st and 2nd for Impact Wrestling tapings. Tickets are available right now. For those tapings on June 1st and June 2nd, um, St. Clair College is such a fun venue. And that show Friday night um, on GWN, the card will go up Friday morning. You guys can get a chance to see who, uh, what competitors will be competing on Friday night and uh, be sure to watch. And then March 23rd and 24th, Impact Wrestling goes to California. Uh, the 23rd, we're in Newark. The 24th, we're in Salinas. Uh, that's with Big Time Wrestling in California. Again, you can get all this information at impactwrestling.com. April 6th, WrestleCon, uh, a lot of events are starting to take place for us with WrestleCon. You've got the Knockouts uh, Mardi Gras Balcony Party. I think that's on Saturday the 7th at 11 p.m. to 2 a.m. Then, of course, you have uh, everything that we're doing live on Twitch. We'll be doing 10 hours a day uh, plus a two-hour podcast each day, and that schedule should be coming out early next week. Uh, then, of course, WrestleCon is Impact Wrestling versus Lucha Underground for the first time ever. The six-man tag team match was announced. Uh, before I'm done, I will tell you the next match that will take place at WrestleCon, Impact versus Lucha. And then that all leads to April 22nd, Redemption, live on pay-per-view and the Impact tapings. Those VIP packages are available right now at impactwrestling.com. So that's kind of our calendar, uh, what we're looking at between today, tomorrow's Impact, Friday, one night only, and then April 22nd, live on pay-per-view, Redemption. Um, with that said, Ross, you can open up the line, and I'll answer some questions before you get to Sammy. That was a, uh, that was a mouthful there, uh, Josh. 
yes, there's a lot happening, Ross. All right. Well, we will open up at this point. Just questions for Josh. We'll we'll go about five minutes for some questions. If you have any questions for Josh Matthews. Unmuted. Q and A session has started. To ask your question, please press star six. If you'd like to ask a question, your request has been received. As always, we ask you to identify yourself and your media outlet, and one question only for Josh. Good afternoon, Josh. This is Harry from Pro Wrestling 247 NBC Sports Radio. Um, My question is about the Twitch channel. You guys are doing a lot of good work over there. Um, Is there potential for maybe some live content that we wouldn't be able to see on the pop television program, maybe some house show programming or something coming to Twitch? Yeah, there will be original programming coming to Twitch soon. Um, Two that I know of for sure that will be like brand new original programs that will be um, uh, coming in the weeks, in the the near weeks. Um, And then as it relates to house shows and live events, um, I think that's a great idea. I think that's something that's um, been talked about. And, you know, it's just getting the proper equipment and getting the people in place to, you know, start the stream and go live. But I think that as we move forward, that we will see more, um, you know, when the stars are competing at a show, then they can stream and they can go live and you can see what they're doing. Uh, You know, that's a huge part of what Twitch is. And I think that's a big part of what we'll bring to Twitch with our stars flying all over the world. Um, each and every weekend, uh, it'd be great to, to to pop in on Moose competing in the UK or or Sammy Callahan in Las Vegas or something like that. That's a, yeah, I think that's the direction where it's all going. You may now ask your question. Hello, Mr. Matthews. This is Big Ray for OneWrestling.com. First and foremost, thank you for joining us today, sir. Thank you. Um, my question to you is just simply, uh, have you heard anything about Eddie Edwards' uh, health updates and... Uh, and will he be able to actually come on and maybe speak to us anytime soon? I'm not sure of his availability to speak on the teleconference. That's a Ross question that maybe we can get that answered later. Um, but I know that Eddie is going to recover fully. And uh, I think it's just a matter of time before Eddie does return to impact. Um, and I know that Sammy's on the line now um, and, and listening, but I think that Eddie will be looking for his retribution on Sammy Callahan sooner rather than later. Thank you. Muted. Hi, Josh. It's Adam from uh, the Impact Lounge in the UK. Good evening to you. Hey, man. How are you? Very good. First of all, congratulations on uh, the chemistry that you've got going on with uh, Sonjay on commentary. Really enjoying it. So well done on that. Um, my question is to do with uh, Ishimori. Obviously, he announced his departure from NOAA this week, or he intends to depart. Does that in, uh, have an effect on uh, the working relationship he has with Impact, can I ask? Sure, you can ask. I don't know the answer to that question. Um, I'm not sure how that affects what Taji does with Impact. Um, I think he's done some incredible things with us. Um, Those of you that watch the show and listen closely to the commentary, I'm a huge fan of his theme music. (laughs) Um, But I I don't know how how it affects. I think that's all to be determined. And thank you for the compliment. Uh, I'm having a lot of fun working with Sanjay each and every week and and learning from him um, as we move forward. Josh, we're going to have one more question for you here. Hi, Josh. It's Jeremy Bennett with Sports Kita. Thanks for uh, taking the time to talk to us today. I'll, I'll echo the sentiments of the, the last guy here. Uh, definitely uh, enjoying the work that you and Sanjay are putting together here on, on the commentary team. My question was uh, for WrestleCon. Um, wanted to get your thoughts on uh, the Lucha, just uh, your general thoughts on uh, seeing Lucha Underground take on Impact Wrestling. And if you would like to see that, as kind of a partnership going forward, kind of like what with, with AAA and what Pro Wrestling Noah have done, would you like to see that going forward? Yeah, I think it would be great. I mean, I was thrilled when I found out that it was going to be Impact versus Lucha Underground um, at WrestleCon on April 6th. 
Um, it's just something that for the fans that we've never seen this, like if I can take myself out of being a part of the wrestling business for 20 years as a fan, it's great to see that. Um, I, I, I like Lucha Underground. I like what they do. I like their presentation of how they do everything. So for them to uh, work with us and to have this relationship where it's impact versus Lucha. And it brings you back to when you were a kid watching wrestling, you never knew what was going to happen on any given night, um, who would show up where, who would do what. And I sort of feel like that's the feeling that we have right now. Um, so I'm really looking forward to being down in new Orleans um, for WrestleCon weekend and everything that we have going on. And again, um, if you guys haven't booked your tickets for the fans out there listening, uh, I would go to WrestleCon.com when this teleconference is over and make your way to uh, to New Orleans on April 6th. Uh, Ross said that was the last question. So with that said, I do have one more announcement, and then I will hang up and let Sammy take over. Um, uh, we do have our second match ready to announce for WrestleCon, which we were just talking about, uh, Impact Wrestling versus Lucha Underground. This match is going to be an I Quit match. Eddie Edwards will return at WrestleCon, and he will go one-on-one with Sammy Callahan live Friday, April 6th. Uh, that show gets started at 9 o'clock. So that's the news for this call. That's the, the headline coming out of this, that Eddie will make his return, WrestleCon, and he will be facing Sammy Callahan in an I Quit match, in a match that I can't wait to see. So thank you guys um, for taking the time to, to ask the questions today. Ross, I will hand it back over to you. Josh, thank you very much. Big big news coming out of Josh today. I uh, appreciate that. And uh, at this point, let's welcome our special guest, Sammy Callahan. you got a lot to talk about, I'm sure. So uh, welcome to the teleconference, Sammy. Uh, first of all, Josh is wrong. I love the fact that the way I find out about matches I'm booked in now is by online or by a conference call. Impact Wrestling Management couldn't go out of their way to at least give me a call or text message and say they wanted me to face Eddie Edwards at WrestleCon. No, it ain't going to happen. Sammy Callahan ain't coming to wrestle at WrestleCon for Impact Wrestling. I'll have more to talk about this later this week. But at this point, I'm done with that situation. I ain't coming. Okay. Well, uh, I'm not sure how to follow that up. but uh, I'll Ross, just... did you know about this announcement? Did you no, know I didn't. Announcement? You put... Okay, so you didn't even know. So no one can give me a heads up. I love how this is how you treat the people that get you the best ratings and the most subscriber count on YouTube. Uh, you just go ahead and book them in matches without getting an okay for him or giving me a heads up. That's total BS at the end of the day, Ross, and you know it. Well, I, I, I would love to bring Josh in to ask him about this, but he's, he's already off the line, so I, I apologize on that. Oh, well, how, how cute. Josh is gone now. How cute. Typical. Well, well I'm going to try to segue... Uh, from that, uh, Sammy, if I can, uh, just ask you, what's, uh, there's a lot going on with you these days. Uh, kind of quickly bring us up to speed on uh, where Sammy Callahan is at. Dude, I'm the, I'm the most hated man in wrestling right now, and so be it. I don't care. I really don't care anymore because this incident has launched me into the next atmosphere. Right now, I'm signed to two national television companies, Lucha Underground and Impact Wrestling, and you never know where I'm going to show up next. And it's going to continue to be like this. People think just because they go and outrage and wrestlers want to talk trash about me online and not to my face, that's going to hurt my bookings. I'm booked more for a bigger rate now. So everything you guys are trying to do is backfire. Well, uh, Sammy, there are uh, a load of media waiting to talk to you. So at this point, we're going to open up for questions for Sammy Callahan. If you'd like to ask if your request has been received. Uh, about me behind my back when they know I can't get to them through a telephone line. Real cool. This is on impact management. You're going to open it up right now for people to ask me questions, pretty much bury one of your talents on a, on a, t- uh, a voice call that everyone can hear. Oh, so that's real cool, Ross. Let's do this then. Let's well, I'm not sure they're, they're going to bury you. I mean, I'm sure no, there are Ross, some. Ross, Ross, let's get to the questions. All right, well, again, media, I ask uh, one question alone. Please identify yourself and your media outlet. Q&A session is over. Muted. Q&A session has started. To ask your question, please press star six. If you'd like to ask if your request has been received, Hello, is anyone on the line? Sammy, hold on one second. We're 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 just getting some, uh, we have a lot of people getting in, in the queue for the uh, the questions. Media, to get in the queue, star six, and we will uh, start it up right now. Oh, you can't deal with all the buzz from the draw. 
Is that what you're saying? You can't handle all the calls right now? Come that on. Is, that is actually true. You're a professional. Tommy? You're a professional, Ross. Tommy? Hello, Sammy. It's Stephanie for Steel Chair Magazine in UK. Um, I I don't want to fuel any more fire in this controversy, and it's what happened. Um, my question is pretty simple. Do you think that uh, the way you wrestle on impact and the way you will wrestle on the Indies or Lucha on the ground will be different now because of what happened? No, it's going to be the same. I'm going to be the guy out there busting my ass night after night, having the match of the night wherever I go. Because that's the one thing. All these people can talk a bunch of crap on me, but wherever Sammy Callahan goes, whether it's on national TV, a big indie company on iPay-Per-View, or somewhere around the world, I create buzz and I get people talking. It's going to continue to be like that. I'm not changing who I am. I'm not going to quit carrying around the baseball bat. I'm going to continue being me. Don't hate on me because I'm better at being me than you guys are being you. Sammy, this is Harry from uh, NBC Sports Radio's Pro Wrestling 247. My question is going to be a little different. I want to touch on the controversy. As a, as a national uh, uh, Ohioan myself, uh, we know Ohio is the home of eight presidents. However, it's also the home of at least 50 current and past superstars in pro wrestling. Sammy, oh, not your- just that. There's a reason that Ohio is called Ohio is for killers. It also has the most serial killers born in one state than any other place in the world. Hey, yeah, we, we got a lot to be proud of in, from our state. My question to you, Sammy, is why is Ohio such a hotbed for professional wrestlers? I mean, currently there are at least eight people on mainstream promotions rosters that are in the top tier of talent. Why is this? Why is Ohio such a hotbed? I, I said in a promo in Canada, Ohio is the heart of America. Like it or not, Ohio is the heart of America because living there as a professional wrestler, it's a great place. You're within driving distance of the East Coast. You're within driving distance of Chicago and more of the Midwest. Right now, Ohio, more than ever, is we're setting wrestling on fire. We're hashtag Midwest territory for a reason because we're bringing back the territory. There's even more talent from around the world and around the country trying to move into our area just to get a piece of the buzz that we're creating. You may now ask your question. Big Ray from OneWrestling.com here, Mr. Callahan. Um, I would love to pour some more gasoline on this whole controversy, and hopefully we get a nice big flame. You bring the matches, bro. I'll bring the fire. All right, so you, you know bring what? bring the matches. I'll bring the fire. I'm going to ask you straightforward, Mr. Callahan. I would love you. Since we've heard you, on, we've heard you on Twitter, we've heard you on social media, I would love you to personally address... Mr. Jim Cornette, or and or the pundits who've never stepped in the ring regarding what happened in the ring with Eddie Edwards. It's real simple. This is pro wrestling. Quit being little bitches. When did our society become a society of just a bunch of people that are straight up bitches? I, I can't believe it. It doesn't matter what you do, what you say, what you think. Somehow it will offend somebody. For all the people that I've offended, you can pretty much just kiss my ass. Jim Cornette can kiss my ass. Any of the wrestlers that want to speak out of me can kiss my ass because I'm making money, I'm setting the wrestling world on fire, and I'm going to become legendary even if it's for all the wrong reasons. By the way, the T-shirt is very sweet, sir. Yeah, and I've made a ton of money off of it. Thank you. But tell me what I'm doing is wrong. Hey, Sammy, it's Jeremy Bennett with Sports Kita. I've been a fan of your work for, for several years now and am a fan of what you're doing right now. It's, it's, it's tremendous. You're, getting, you're pissing people off, and I love it. My question, though, is with the recent events with Eddie Edwards, has Impact Management had a word with you, given you any sort of warning, or, or has there been any sort of conversation? Dude, Impact Management came at me as soon as it happened. And Eddie Edwards wanted to act to my face like nothing's wrong. Now he wants to go on these interviews and try to tell people that he thinks I might have done this on purpose to get myself over. Eddie, I have worked with you for over 10 years, and we're supposed to be friends. And he's going to think I did this on purpose. So be it. Now people want to make me out to be a monster. It's time to be a monster. I don't care anymore. You know what? I, I'll keep saying this over and over and over and over and over. Scott Hall said this. He said, you know what? I have a bunch of friends. I want some money now. That's how I feel. I have the friends that I need and I want, so it's time to make some money. Thanks, Sammy.
Hey, Sammy, this is Tony from the Mirror Sport in, in the UK. Hope you're well. My, my question right. is, my question's around, I mean, you you just touched on, you know, Jim Connett and kiss your ass. Um, everyone else is sort of shouted out to you and do the same. Um, but from a peer perspective, how do, how do you react to the, you know, the guys and the girls who are actually working in, in the ring at, the, at this time who have, you know, called into question what you've done? Yo, if people are afraid of me, then so be it. I really don't care at this point. I think my track record speaks for itself. I'm one of the only guys in wrestling history now to wrestle for Lucha Underground, Impact Wrestling, WWE, NXT, Ring of Honor, New Japan. So when some people can start adding that to their resume or their repertoire, they can start talking shit on me and me not caring. That's why I don't care. If anyone wants to question my, my motives or question me as a wrestler, the proof's in the pudding. Me being in the main event was the highest rating episode of Impact in months. Me being in the main event and the, the, the actions that I performed and the buzz that I create has made impact break records week after week with subscriber counts on YouTube. So with anyone that wants to say, oh, like you're unsafe or you're dangerous, oh, screw it. Let, I'll sort of take the turn, turn from another famous professional wrestler, The Undertaker. Get the ring and let me make you famous because I'm the person that everyone's talking. Hi, Sammy. It's Joey from Sport Bible. Um, I was just wondering, uh, you said about being able to sort of turn up in any promotion anywhere. And obviously you made your debut for New Japan in um, the Tag League recently. Is New Japan a promotion you've got your eye on returning to at any point? Absolutely. I will work everywhere. It doesn't matter where I am. I'll be a guy in Memphis having the best match in Memphis. Then I'll go to the East Coast and have a crazy death match and be a garbage wrestler, and I'll have the best match there. And then I'll go to Japan. I'll have an awesome strong style match there. Then I'll go to England and Germany and do the best match there. It, it doesn't really matter. I want to be everywhere. I want to be back in New Japan. I want to win the Impact World Championship. I want to win the Lucha Underground World Championship. I want to do it all because I am a worldwide desperado. I'm the last cowboy left in this business. Hey, Sam, we might kill him from ProWrestling.com, and I'll, I'll see you Friday, so if you want to kick my ass with this question, you know where to find me. Um, my question is, uh, is there any time till or any discussion going on for possibly bringing in the H.E. Davidson or maybe any other members of the OVE family to Impact Wrestling down the line? You don't think we're trying? I want all my Ohio boys here, because all my Ohio boys are money just like me. Anyone that me and Dave and Jake have taken under our wing has become money. Look at Desmond Xavier, another Ohio boy that we took under our ring and trained. Now he's won the Impact X Cup and is over two in at Dragon Gate. Zachary Witt, same thing. Jessica Havoc, one of the best girls in the business right now, same thing. The list goes on and on and on and on and on. So anyone that any national company wants to get from Ohio is going to help their roster, and I'll say that from the bottom of my heart because the proof's in the pudding. Anywhere our Ohio, our Ohio guys go, we have the best match that we create in us. All right, thanks, brother. Appreciate it. Hi, Sammy. David Dunn with the New Zealand Pro Wrestling Informer. Um, it sounds like maybe you're not too happy about the match that's been announced for WrestleCon, but I was just wondering, as someone who has a foot in both camps, you know, Impact Wrestling, Lucha Underground, um, how do you decide what side to be on in an event such as what? Impact versus Lucha Underground? Well, at this point, I think I deserve at least enough respect for Impact Management to hit me up and tell me the match they want to put me on is one of the biggest shows of the year. But like always, I find out over social media or over a conference call. So at this point, Impact Management can kiss my ass too. I'm going to do exactly what I want. I'm telling you right now, Sammy Callahan is not coming to WrestleCon to wrestle for Impact. Sammy, hi. It's Tony Quant from the Mirror Sport again. Um, my question this time was around the, the partnership with um, Impact and Lucha Underground and just what, what you think of it and um, how excited you are about things going forward. I think it's amazing just for wrestling in general. 
like right now is an awesome time to be a professional wrestler because people are starting to get smart. They're starting to realize that WWE has a monopoly on everything, on talent. They're buying up indie promotions now. So now it, it has to be everyone or WWE. Everyone has to work together, and all the major promotions are starting to realize that. Lucha Underground working together is a great deal. It's two companies that people are going to be talking about in the year coming because the relationship together and the talent connections that we're going to be able to do. And just for instance, look what just happened last week. Austin Aries, the Impact World Champion, showed up in a Ring of Honor event unannounced. So right now in wrestling, you really don't know where people's going to show up and what people's going to do. And so in my line of work, this is going to make my wallet look really good because I'm going to be able to double dip and triple dip for as many promotions as I can. Sammy, Andre Corbio from WrestlingWithWrestling.com. How are you? Fantastic. How are you? I'm awesome. Glad to be on the call with you. Now, well, it's good. no secret that Impact I'm Wrestling glad you're is... doing awesome. <laughs> I jumped the gun there. Now, it's no secret that Impact Wrestling is blazing trails when it relates to forging new partnerships. Now, my question, Sammy, surrounding partnerships... My website, Wrestling with Wrestling, is developing a relationship with Chicago's AAW. We all know it's a well-rounded promotion that many Impact Wrestling stars frequent. Now, it's also a promotion that you've been the heavyweight champion in. Would Impact Wrestling, if they legitimately partnered with AAW as a top feeder promotion of the company, what do you think AAW talents could bring to the Impact Wrestling in terms of assistance and showcasing abilities? Well, I think it benefit both companies. Dude, people don't realize, like, AAW, the amount of talent, their stories, everything about that program, they're selling out every show they run, and they're, they're really honing great professional wrestlers. Like, look at all the talent that were AAW mainstays that are now in Impact Wrestling. Trevor Lee, Andrew Everett, Sammy Callahan, Dave and Jake Chris, Desmond Xavier, Jimmy Jacobs, Congo Kong. The list keeps going on and on and on and on and on. So any companies that want to work together is going to help benefit both companies in today's time and age of wrestling. Yeah, Mike's, Mike's doing a great job with that promotion. Yeah. He pays me a lot of money, so I'll say good things about him too. Danny, you know, Danny and Mike, you're doing great over there at AAW. <laughs> hey, Sammy, it's Jeremy Bennett again with Sports Kita. What makes the baseball bat your weapon of choice? I don't know. I saw it laying around in the back, and you know what I said? I said, you know, it's going to be pretty good to start attacking people with this, and that's what I did. A lot of times what goes through my head, there's no rhyme or reason. Things just happen, and that's how I live my life. I'm a spontaneous person. I'm going to continue to be a spontaneous person. This moment isn't going to calm me down. I just turned 30 years old, and people say it's time to grow up. You know what? I'm not growing up anymore. I like the person I am. I'm going to continue to be the person that I am. If people want to call me the new Sting, then so be it. I mean, Sting was a pretty badass dude to carry a baseball bat, but the difference between me and Sting is I'm not going to be hiding up in the rafters. I'm going to be coming at you face to face. Are, are you looking to uh, are you looking to look at any kind of monetary things with the baseball bat? Looking to kind of cash in off of that weapon? Oh, bro, I already got 20 of these custom baseball bats coming to sell indie shows. You don't think I'm going to pad my pocket with the sales of baseball bats at shows? Sammy, we have an uh, Internet question coming from James Holmes. Sammy, do you feel any remorse for what you did to Eddie Edwards? No, because it's professional wrestling. Did uh, Shane Douglas wants to talk crap about me online, but Shane Douglas broke Gary Wolf's neck, and he didn't feel bad about it. Owen Hart broke Stone Cold's neck. He didn't feel bad about it. Injuries happen in pro wrestling. Accidents happen. And I'm going to make the best out of this. I'm going to become the biggest professional wrestler in the world right now. Sammy, this is Eric from NBC Sports Radio's Pro Wrestling 247 again. Uh, Two-tier question here. One, coming up in April, we have Lucha Underground versus Impact Wrestling. Who in Impact, if anybody, could hang in the temple? And second of all, since Josh wants to make matches here on our conference call, how about we put Josh Matthews in the ring against Matt Stryker and let's see who has the best commentator? No, how about we just have me wrestle good old Josh Matthews and I'll kick his ass like everyone else? 
If he wants to run his mouth, I'll beat his ass too. I don't care if you're a commentator, a ring announcer, a referee, a wrestler. It doesn't really matter. A lot of guys from Impact can hang in the temple, and it's been proven. Impact and Lucha, uh, Impact Lucha Underground use a bunch of different talent that are on the same shows. Johnny Mundo, Johnny Impact. Brian Cage, Brian Cage, Sammy, Jeremiah Crane, Sammy Callahan. And I think with this relationship of the next couple seasons, you're going to see a lot more impact guys come into the mix there. Hey, Sam, Mike Kellen from ProWrestling.com here again. Uh, I just wanted to talk a little bit about uh, quite recently you had uh, New Japan start Tetsuya Naito in the Midwest. You actually faced him in the main event for AAW. Uh, he did that whole Midwest tour. I just wanted to kind of get your thoughts on what that was like for you, uh, facing someone like Naito, uh, getting to sort of face them in your own home state for your own promotion, um, or at least have him there, and then, of course, facing him again at, at AEW. And if there's anybody else uh, from any other corner of the world that you'd love to kind of do something similar with in the future. I'd like to have a lot more New Japan guys over here and work for the Wrestling Revolver and AAW. Like, anytime we're able to work on a deal like that, we're going to do it because even though I'm such a bad guy, I run a wrestling company called the Wrestling Revolver. I bring over some pretty amazing talent for people to see at my shows. So getting a chance to wrestle Naito at AAW, which wasn't my show, the night after my show where I booked Naito, he got to wrestle me on my home turf because that building and that company, I am the draw. The main event between me and Naito sold out in less than four minutes. And that's not just because of Naito. That's because of me, too. I'm not taking anything away from Naito. Uh, if I have to say it right now, he's probably one of my favorite wrestlers in the world to watch because everything about him is different and original. So anytime we can get New Japan guys over here, I'm going to do that, and I'm going to continue to do that for the fans because, you know, I'm such a bad guy. Send me, we have an email question from Roman Ochoa. Send me, what are your Rain. thoughts? Roman Reigns is calling. Yeah. What are your thoughts on the current women's revolution? It's amazing. I'm one of the first guys to say, uh, I love intergender wrestling. I don't think women should be looked down upon as any lesser than the guys. I look at professional wrestling as, as a comic book movie or it's a marvel. Why can't Black Widow fight the Incredible Hawk? Why can't uh, Storm fight Spider-Man? Like, Storm would kick Spider-Man's ass, and she's a girl. Like, so that's how I look at wrestling. Like, it doesn't matter if you're male. It doesn't matter if you're female. Everyone has a certain moveset, certain skill set that they can bring to the table. And I think over the next couple of years, with the Women's Revolution, I hope more intergender wrestling continues to pop up because it's something that can be really special when done the right way. Brian Cage and Tessa Blanchard at Wrestle Circus just had one of the best intergender matches I've ever seen. And it was ridiculous. And no one, no one batted an eye that, oh, my gosh, there's no way Tessa could beat Brian Cage. But they told a story, and they made people believe. And that's what wrestling is going to become even more so once the, the stigma of intergender wrestling wears down a little bit. Hey, Sammy. It's Timo here from London on behalf of WrestleTalk. Um, thank you for joining us today. I appreciate you taking the time out, man. You're welcome. Thank you for giving me a thank you. At least someone appreciates me. <laughs> uh, honestly, from a personal side, huge fan as well. So it's a really big step for me. But um, obviously, I'm guessing that your time might be limited talking to us. So I just wanted to ask a question. Obviously, after the whole um, Eddie Edwards thing in the ring, um, what was the reaction in the back after your match uh, with Eddie and how it ended? I had so many people come up to me and say I was careless and unsafe. And that's why I really just turned everything off and said, you know what? I don't give a damn anymore who I offend or who I upset because I'm sitting at top. It's a way better view sitting on top of the mountain than it is at the bottom trying to climb all the way up. Now I've reached the top of the mountain and no one's going to pull me down. Hey, Sammy, it's Jeremy Bennett with Sports Keto once again. Uh, what sort of differences, if there are any, do you see in Jeremiah Crane with Lucha Underground and Sammy Callahan in Impact Wrestling? Well, Sammy Callahan is just an extension of myself. At this point, I've kind of lost track who I am as a real person and who, who I am as Sammy Callahan anymore. The, the lines are blurred. Now, Jeremiah Crane, on the other hand, he's a way more messed up individual than I am. And when I go to the temple and I have to put on that gear and I have to become that different person, I do. It's Jekyll and Hyde. People don't like wrestling me as Jeremiah Crane because Jeremiah Crane is a mean son of a bitch. 
And that's saying something because I'm pretty sure everyone thinks Sammy Callahan's a, a mean son of a bitch, garbage, unsafe, dangerous, deathmatch trash worker as well. Yeah, I'm sure they're uh, they're they're probably uh, kind of up in the crazy of Sammy Callahan a little bit, and that ain't a bad thing. I'm glad Jeremiah Crane doesn't come out that often because my body would be dead right now if I have to had to put it through this kind of stuff that Jeremiah Crane puts his body through. I'm glad I get to wrestle with Sammy Callahan 90 percent of the year. Sammy, this is BQ from the Impact Lounge. You were a trailblazer and one of the first stars to leave the WWE umbrella and bet on yourself in the Indies. Do you feel like you don't get enough credit and respect for what you've been able to accomplish? I never get enough credit. And at the end of the day, it's because of my size. But right now I'm proving that a five foot eight white kid from Ohio can set the world on fire. A lot of people want to say, oh, you could have hacked it in NXT. That's why NXT released you. No, I quit. I quit because I wasn't consistent with sitting around and just collecting a paycheck. They didn't know what they had, and I was going to go out and prove to them that I'm one of the biggest wrestling stars on this planet today, and that's exactly what I'm doing. Hey, Sammy, it's Timo again from WrestleTalk TV. I've got uh, another question for you as well. Um, just wanted to find out from you. Obviously, you've got um, a flurry of titles in Impact at the moment. Um, which ones uh, do you have your crosshairs on at the moment? I mean, do, are we going to see Austin Aries and Sammy Callahan clash for, you know, the Impact title? I'd love to Austin Aries again because when I was younger, he beat the shit out of me. He has one coming to him. Impact management better not hope that me and Austin Aries get that ring because I might do the same thing to him as I did to Eddie Edwards. By the end of the year, my goal and OVE's goal is to take control of Impact Wrestling and take control of, pun intended, everything. I'd be lying if I didn't say that I was going to write for Austin Aries or Johnny Impact or anyone else in the main event picture right now. I'm coming for you, and I'm coming with, for you with everything I got. Look forward to seeing it. Thanks, Sammy. Well, Sammy, I know you said you had about 30 minutes, and we've uh, pushed it to right at about 30 minutes. I appreciate your time very much this week. Uh, certainly very outspoken. Uh, a lot going on with you. I'll give you the uh, floor for a, uh, a final thought. I'm done with this. That's, what, that's the final thought. This is stupid. For anyone getting upset, you're stupid. Follow me on Instagram, social media, Twitter, at the Sammy Callahan on Twitter, at official Callahan on Instagram, and also check out my company that we're blazing things away in the Midwest, at PW Revolver. That's it. I'm done. Sammy Callahan is not coming to WrestleCon for Impact. Bye-bye. Have a good day. Have a good life. I'm going to go on and keep busy and making a bunch of money today. All righty. Well, there you have it. Sammy, thank you very much. Media, I appreciate your, your time very much, and we will talk to you next week.